rivalry, Duke and Wake Forest. It's the 250th meeting between these two schools. We just saw last night the ACC, the college football champion with the Clemson Tigers, and now Hoops reigns supreme. So does the ACC. Six teams in the top 15, including one of the nation's three unbeaten teams. Two new head men with track records of success, the Commonwealth coaches in Kentucky and Pennsylvania. Zion Williamson has taken Woodstock-like crowds wherever he's gone. And last year, the ACC put nine teams into the tournament. This year, at the top of the league, you've got Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, and into the top 10 now, Virginia Tech as well. So glad to have you here with us tonight at Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. My cousins, Jordan Cornette, Notre Dame's all-time leading shot blocker. Number one Duke is a young team tonight. They become Division One's last team to play a true road game. It's a new test for this squad. It's a new test indeed. And look, people are saying it's against a 7-6 and six Wake Forest team. That's not a test, but when you come to Duke, Mike, you understand that you're going to see a team that doesn't necessarily look like the one that you're seeing on tape. They're going to get their best shot from this Wake Forest team, and can they handle a crowd where the boos are a little bit louder than they are at home? It really helps to have a point guard like Trey Jones who sets the table for this Duke team. He's been one of the best at his position in the country. Zion Williamson has been one of the best regardless of position because you can't really nail him down to one anyway. And we are ready to go. Bill Covington, Jr., Brian O'Connell, Jerry Heater. The officiating triumvirate for tonight's game. It's Wake Forest 7-6 and six in the white. And Duke at 12-1, and one, a two-point loss against Gonzaga. Their only defeat in the black uniforms. Corey Johnson down the lane, came up empty. Loose ball, stolen away. Here goes Childress, the leading scorer for Wake Forest. And his layup is no good. It's back the other way. A missed opportunity to take the lead first for Wake. Yeah, and if you're a Duke fan, a little troubling. What you've seen has become a trend in these last few games from Cam Reddish. Six turnovers last game. The game before that, six turnovers. First possession here, a giveaway. Regularly scheduled action again here for Duke after a long layoff. Baseline drive is short from Barrett. And the fight for the loose ball, Demon Deacons have it. Duke had about two weeks off before their Saturday game against Clemson. They played for the first time since December 20th and picked up the 87-68 win. Traveling the call. And it's back to Duke, Mike Krzyzewski who now ties John Wooden for most weeks ranked number one as a head coach, 121 weeks atop the AP poll, which, if you want some perspective on that, that's about two trips back and forth to Mars. How long did it take you? It's an impressive research there, Mike. <laughs> Corner three is good for R.J. Barrett. And on the flip side, how about a promising sign for Duke? R.J. Barrett finding himself from distance, one of his last 12 from that three-point line. So this Duke offense will feed off him and his ability to make perimeter shots. Wake Forest lost this ACC opener against Georgia Tech on Saturday, 92-79. A big number to give up to Tech. On the baseline, Jalen Horde. Look, Mike, I'm going to tell you, that's where Wake Forest can have some success. Jalen Horde, his ability to, as a dynamic guy on the outside with that body to go one-on-one -on -one in space. Playing five outside. The try at the rim, no good for Trey Jones. And it stays here, two minutes gone. Duke up by one over Danny Manning's Demon Deacons. Just two and 32 against ranked squads and 11 of the last time of 12 times that Wake Forest has played a number one team it's been the Blue Devils first two for Zion Williamson man so efficient back to the basket patient with the play lets the game come to him Williamson averaging 20 a game trailing only his fellow freshman RJ Barrett at 23 points a night There's Childress into the lane. The kick out for Horde. Three-point try is no good. He's just a 22% three-point shooter, but the follow goes. And it's 5-4. And because the shot came with good offense, yes, you don't connect from three, but it puts you in a pristine offensive rebounding opportunity for Smart to give you two. Williamson hits the three. Just his fifth 
in 22 tries this year. John D. Brown slips away from Williamson. His floater is his first two points. Only returning starter from last year for a Wake Forest squad that welcomes nine new players this season. Baseline drop off. And Javin Gloria goes to the line for two. As you see here, good offense. And I'll tell you, if Williamson's going to get it going from the three point line, Wake Forest could be a long night. Those are the kind of opportunities that you're willing to give Duke and say, all right, well, if he's going to hurt us, make him do it beyond the arc, but showing that he's got a little bit of that to his game. He's not been a great three-point shooter this year. But as you got down on the floor during warm-ups today, you got to stand by him. What did you make of his overall physical stature? But humans aren't built like that. <laughs> That's just not normal what you're seeing there. But, you know, going back to that three-point line, him not truly using it as a weapon, that's high basketball IQ. He understands that they can't defend him inside the three-point line, so he's always in pursuit there, and that's why he's so efficient. Couple of rejections under the bucket. Torrey Johnson denied twice by the Blue Devils. A great shot-blocking team, averaging eight a game. It's best in the country. Wake Forest needs to understand that if you drive that thing, there has to be a pull-up once you get inside the free throw line to eliminate some of those rim protectors and what they do. Joe goes off on the pull-up, cleared by Reddish. This is where Duke excels in transition where they score so many of their points. Stepped out of bounds there on the sideline. It's back to Wake, down three. A fourth of the offense from Duke comes from that transition game, and it's not necessarily get the steal and go the other way. It can be off a make, it can be off a miss. This team looks to play fast, and Wake Forest has to understand communication, critical. What I found interesting, Jordan, was that even knowing for Danny Manning how fast Duke wants to go, bucket and one for a Kenneth Smart, Wake Forest doesn't want to slow it down. No, it's in their DNA, talking with Coach Manning today. He said, look, we've got to be who we are. We can't let Duke dictate that. And one of the oldest plays in the book, the pick and roll, the dive guy, smart. Not much of an offensive threat, but active early. What do you know? Yeah, that's good. And I got an opportunity for one from the line. Smart, the grad transfer from Buffalo, where he spent four seasons, three NCAA tournament trips under his belt. And he's got five of the first nine for the Demon Deacons team that got a win in the tournament a year ago. This is a guy that understands it comes from a winning culture. And again, Reddish just out of his element at times, it seems, out of rhythm. A giveaway. Can Wake Forest capitalize? They're hanging tough early. See? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch. Switching makes it easy to save. Well, Zion Williamson sets the internet on fire every time he dunks the basketball, but that 360 jaw dropper against Clemson had Duke fans debating all week whether or not that was the best Duke dunk of all time. But guys, he's got some pretty stiff competition to go up against. First of all, he's got to go up against Jason Tatum, his throwdown against North Carolina, Dante Jones posterizing UVA, and Bobby Hurley's alley-oop to the great Grant Hill. So guys, as the votes come in to determine the top spot, there's no debate on this. Zion has 30 dunks. That's more than his opponents combined. And this Duke team, they're on pace to break the Duke record of 235 dunks set last year. And I love what Coach K had to say before the game, asking me if that was his favorite. And he said, my favorite was R.J. Barrett's reaction after Zion threw it down. Yeah, Brooke, that's really interesting because it speaks to how tight-knit this group is. These guys want to see each other win, and that's really easy to have dissension amongst the team with so many stars. Duke doesn't battle that. It allows them to succeed. And oh yeah, guys like that too. Well, when you can score on one dribble that easily, now seven for Williamson as Brown gets whistled for his first. That makes the score jump up pretty quickly. And just finds an area, that mid-post area against the zone. It's where it collapses. And it's the ability on the catch to know exactly what you want to do with it. Most guys catch that mid-post on 
comfortable, want to get rid of it. Powerful decision, power dribble, power finish at the rim from a powerful guy. Now eight for Williamson for the Blue Devils. The lead the ACC, 91 points a game, third most in Division I. Seventeen foot pull up is no good for Isaiah Musius just into the game. Foul is on Williamson, his first. Just the beginning of our double header tonight because coming up next, it's Super Tuesday, further action, 12th ranked North Carolina, 15th ranked NC State from Raleigh. NC State this year has been defined by hustle, defense. They're pressing almost more than anybody at this level. And Carolina, interestingly, it's kind of a role reversal. They're still finding their way. So it'll be an interesting matchup there in the sold-out PNC arena. It'll be played at a very high level, high energy, as you're talking about there, Mike, because both teams go deep into their bench. Carolina, eight or nine guys. North Carolina State uses up to ten guys. So, oof, that's going to be up and down. Fun one to watch, fun one to call. The game's also available for you on the ESPN app, wherever you go. Here's Olivier Saar, the sophomore from France, as he replaces Smart. One big for another. Saar gives up a little bit of that muscle that Smart possesses. If you're Duke, pounded inside, really challenged the interior. Baseline pass tipped out of bounds. As Trey Jones gets a hand in there. Coach K has repeatedly praised him as one of the best defenders that this school has seen in its history. That's about as high a praise it can get from an institution and a program like Dukes. Childress navigating his way, still 15 to shoot for weight. And what you'll see is Childress finds what he thinks to be a gap to the rim. This defense just converges on the basketball like Piranha, where they see their next meal. I mean, they close in so quickly, and the length and athleticism allows for that. And guys, just watching Trey Jones be on the ball, you can see his focus, and that's exactly what Coach K and John Shire talked about. And for the birthday boy, he gets a couple of points. He does on the goaltending. It all started at the other end with Marquise Bolden cleaning the glass and creating transition opportunity. It's just beautiful basketball executed in the transition, keyed by the defense, but it's the outlet pass from Jack White that allows the finish on the other end from Jones. Understanding a sense of urgency to pursue that early offense. Out of bounds and last touch by Saar for Wake Forest. Back to Duke. Now watch defense. Great timing from Bolden. Sublime outlet to Jones, which allows Jones to ultimately get the goaltend right there. But it's understanding the athletes they have filling lanes, push that ball up, allow that defense not to get settled. And again, 25% of the offensive production comes from plays like that. Across the first four minutes, Duke had made three baskets, turned it over three times. And that miss ends a string of four straight that had gone through. Numbers for the Deacons. White defends admirably at the rim. Brown goes baseline, stuffed again by the junior from Australia. Barrett's on the move. Nearly fielded his own miss. Duke by five, six and a half minutes gone. A step back for Childress, like his daddy. All that was missing from the Childress crossover was the taunting come on back for the defense like his daddy did it back in the day. What a big time shot. And Bolden's out of bounds. Wake has a chance to tie as they come back down the floor. Yeah, Pops has to be proud watching his son do this work. The associate head coach on the bench, former star. That's exactly what Pop and Mitt Randolph, except he said, come on defense, come on back here. But same finish right there. Big time shot, keeping this crowd in it and keeping Wake Forest alive. There he is, there's a look. Still looks like he can give you some minutes out there, doesn't he, Randolph? And Brooke, as you'll tell us later on in the game, there's a pretty good competitive rivalry between father and son as well. Are we talking three-point shooting? Are we talking shoe game? <laughs> what, what, what are we talking? Because a lot a, of debate was going on today in this gym. There's a lot to be revealed. Fouls on Alex O'Connell, his first for the Blue Devils. Randolph Childress, 95. Graduate of Wake Forest. 
under Danny Manning now in his fifth season and the first free throw is good for Sharon Wright Jr. the freshman out of Florence South Carolina what Wake has done so far in this contest for the most part taking care of the basketball and because of that it's taken away Duke's ability to truly run and it slowed the game down some while Wake has still been opportunistic when it's allowed for itself Challenging Duke to beat them in a the half court, something Duke is capable of doing, but hasn't had to do too often this season. And it's a big step up competition-wise, just thinking about the non-conference schedule for Wake Forest, then going into ACC play. Reddish way off of the three-point try. Tees it up again. As Duke continues to pound the offensive glass. How about Delorier in this sequence? Really working on a backboard to help his guys out. And how about that to get the confidence level back up? Great point, Mike. That's huge. Deloria doing the work on the backboard gave Reddish three opportunities in that half-court setting, and he gets the dunk finish, a high-percentage shot that maybe gets him going. Rather than starting from the three-point line, working inside and going out. You know, it's a positive there for Duke, but it's also a negative for Wake Forest that they gave up all those offensive boards. Absolutely, and sharing the rock right there makes that defense shifty and allows the offense to be advantageous to him dunk for Reddish. Those are the kind of things he needs to look for early in the game. Your shot's not going. How else can you have an impact? Can you defend? Can you rebound? A place where he can grow. But also pursuing those higher percentage field goals and then stepping up, then knocking down that three-point shot. As Childress does plus the second foul on Reddish of the first half. Wow! Fans loving Childress right now. This young man, take a look at him. Watch a play like this, a rhythm bounce. But this is a young man who came in as a freshman. A lot of people said he didn't belong on this stage. He wasn't good enough to play at this level. His dad's a coach. His dad's the great Randolph Childress. And all he did, and why I say, young guys out there listening, you can start as a freshman, not change the world like Zion Williamson, but work at it when you become a sophomore. And then when you reach your junior year, you're averaging 17 points per game, and he firmly belongs, and he's been the difference here early for the Demon Deacons. Huge jump, second biggest scoring increase in the league, only behind Louisville's Jordan Wara, who's seen a ton more playing time this year under Chris Mack. Wakes on a 9-2 run at the moment. The fouls racking up for Duke. And Brandon Childress, the Demon Deacons' leading scorer, has got him going up by a pair. Back here at Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, number one, Duke Wake Forest. And it's the unranked Demon Deacons with a two-point lead, 18-16 over Duke, 11-48 in the first half. Mike Cousins, Jordan Cordette, Brooke Weisbrod, glad to have you along with us as it's Wake basketball. To get things going, and the quick jumper for Wake falls through. Wake's got to be feeling pretty good right about now. Brooke, what was the talk like in the huddle? Yeah, that's exactly it, Mike. They just talked about how relaxed they were, and I talked to Randolph Childress about it, and he said, we wanted to come out and just play under control, and that's exactly what we've done. And then I looked at him and I said, I saw you cheesing when Brandon hit that big three. He goes, I was actually thinking about you and our conversation today about the best three-point shooter of all time. So we'll, we'll get to that, but he knows. Now, Duke has gone to the only thing cooler than cool from three-point range, and that's ice cold. Got to get it back inside. And it's 2018, the lead for Wake. Wake's got to do a better job defensive rebounding, possess that thing and go. Duke getting too many opportunities for second chances. And against an offense like this, you're never going to win. Musius, just wide. A soaring horn is sent the other way. Sixth block of the night for Duke. Williamson turns it into a dunk. Trey Jones, masterful in the open floor, as good a decision maker as you'll find in the country. Knows where to go with that thing with Williamson. Upstairs, rare air. Wake Forest elite spacing right here. Children's gonna challenge White. Man, has White been tough defending this evening? 
But again, just watch Trey Jones. When you got a point guard like this, he can make your team special. Sees the defense, reads the defense, understands Childress is not going to elevate with a guy like Williamson. Heck, Mike, who is going to elevate with a guy like Williamson? Delivers it where only one guy can get it and punctuates the play. And now, Jordan, they've got one second, so it's got to be quick. Contact there between Delorier and Smart, and it's a shot clock violation. Coming up Saturday, an afternoon ACC doubleheader for you on ESPN. Noon Eastern, number 12, North Carolina, which takes on NC State after this game. They host Jordan Warren and Louisville, and then number one, Duke, in Tallahassee, to take on number 13, Florida State, and a sonic blockbuster. Both games also streaming on the ESPN app, so you can take them wherever you go. If you're watching SportsCenter before the game, you heard the nugget that the last two ACC road openers for Duke have been losses. Last year, it was an early December game. Come on, that fade away from right. At Boston College, and then two years ago, right around New Year's, at Virginia Tech, a game where they didn't have Grayson Allen, as he was in street clothes for that game. And when we talked to Coach K before the game, he kind of downplayed the fact that it's their first true road game of the year, but it looks like that has played somewhat of a factor here in the first half. Yeah, because he knows how the team has been tested and how they've answered those challenges. Uh, and he also knows he has Zion Williamson. And this is, you know, talk about the dunks all you want, but how many guys do you know with a unique skill set like that and a vision like the one that Zion possesses and the selflessness? to want to impact the game, not by just scoring it, dunking it, but making the right read and play. And Williamson is so masterful as an efficient player. Everything he does is efficient on the floor, and that's why I think he's been far and away Duke's best player right now. Now, if you want to talk about who's the next level number one, we can get into that debate. But right now, there is no debate. Williamson has been the best player for Duke all season long. Coming up just shy of a double-double coming into the game, 20 points and nine and a half rebounds on the stat sheet. Duke's got it on the travel, fifth wake turnover. The co-captain's getting down defensively right there. Delorier and White meeting the dribbler at the baseline, closing it off, walling it off defensively, generating a turnover. Delorier has been a nice spark into the starting lineup, going back to their game against Yale, which was just the sixth start of his career. But he gives them a lot of positional flexibility, and he gives them a four-point lead. Gloria, he just doesn't miss shots, man. 15 of his last 15 over the last five games. Make that 16 of 16. Make that 17, excuse me, 17 of 17. And again, good execution here offensively. Deloria is the dive guy, does what all big should. Shows his hand, makes himself a receiver, one that the guard is aware of, and it's an easy game there for Duke. Ball tipped, and out of bounds off of Duke. Good fight from Wake so far in the first 12 minutes of the game, but they're starting to get careless with that basketball. They're starting to create opportunities for Duke's defense, and when Duke's defense gets involved, generating those turnovers that's when they run away from the opponent that's where it can get dangerous they score 91 a game pass to the interior not a good angle williamson got beating up. ahead got tripped up he was looking for jordan goldwire and duke has its fifth turnover yeah, he got tied up with johnson right there i don't know if johnson uh, it didn't look like johnson tripped him on purpose but definitely unseated him on the break right there and that could have been two for goldwire Childress probes the lane, foul before the shot on the floor. And in, in transition here, we'll get a better look. Duke and Zion, man, his handle pretty impressive in the vision. Oh, look, yeah, there was no trip up. Floor got it. Childress finds himself back at the free throw line as O'Connell comes onto the floor to spell Williamson. Even though it's been a tough start to the year for Wake at seven and six and losing their ACC opener, this is one of their strengths. They drop 22 fouls a game, second most in the ACC, and they score about a quarter of their points at the strike. Yeah, I mean, looking at better 19 points per game coming from there. 
This is a team that's not afraid to challenge you at the rim and, and be aggressive offensively and generate that contact. However, this is a Duke team that does such a great job getting in passing lanes and also protecting the rim. So there's got to be a, a, a compromise there with this Wake Forest offense. Pursuit of some of the perimeter shots, the pull-ups, and they've started to find those, and that's why they've kept this one close thus far. Barrett drives, and the kick out. Three-pointer was halfway down for Goldwire. And it's Wake Forest down by two. They've got the ball when we come back. 7.46 to go as they try and knock off a number one team for just the sixth time in 31 tries. Now St. John's into the top 25 for the first time in four years. In the SEC, they've got four teams in the top 25. Tennessee, it's only loss against Kansas, which had its season take a turn for the worst with an injury this past week. And Auburn, 11 and two, Bruce Pearl says, hey, nobody's talking about us. Well, they're gonna open SEC play coming up tomorrow night against Ole Miss. I'll be on ESPN 2, 7 Eastern. My cousins, Jordan Cornette, Brooke Weisbrod with you here from Joel Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And it's been close from the tip. Here between Wake Forest and number one Duke playing its first true road game of the year. And that's adjudicated an offensive foul against Tory Johnson. Two observations there. The man Cam Reddish from distance is really out of whack. And then two, you talk about quarterback in your team offensively, and he does it defensively to Jones. What defensive anticipation there. Let's the offense come to him. Offers his body up to the basketball gods. Gives his team another goal of the year. So much Trey Jones adds to the team. Third best assist to turnover ratio in the country. And a stout defender as well. He drives, dishes, and Barrett finishes with ease. My cousin's a basketball Buddha as he sings the praises of Jones, delivers for the dunk. And you know what I love about Trey Jones is understanding his place in the rotation. You've got the headliners in RJ and Zion. And you know what Trey Jones says he wants to do with this season? Obviously win the national championship, but become the defensive player of the year that's where his mind is at that's an unselfish guy that doesn't want to score the ball just wants to have a positive impact and sees the gap on the baseline gets the defense to commit to him and when they commit to him he dishes off in stride Argent punctuation his play speaks for itself but the next step that coach K said he wants to see from Jones the freshman is communication better communication because he said when you're the best player at Apple Valley High School in suburban Minneapolis that's very apparent. But when you come here and you still remain one of the best players, then you've got to do something else. And you've got to be more verbal, a better communicator with your teammates and continue to grow your leadership ability. Yeah, no doubt, Mike. And that's kind of the foundation for Coach K's program, which I think is very interesting and obviously very successful is communication because that carries over, as Coach was saying to us, in life. I mean, that's an essential quality to have and you need it definitely you know as I was playing defensively communicating with your guys getting back identifying a man but also just communicating on and off the court and then you see a team synergize everybody's on the same page and then beautiful things happen well guys 13 games into his freshman season Trey Jones he's already cementing himself as one of the best point guards to ever play at Duke last game he had nine assists with zero turnovers against Clemson so Jones became actually the first player in Duke history to go four games with seven assists, no turnovers, passing John Shire with that performance. Guys, that was his fifth game with zero turnovers this season. And Coach K said that Trey knows how to put the ball in the sweet spot of his teammates where he can shoot it. I appreciate that. Real deep three almost turned into a transition opportunity for Williamson, but quick thinking from Horde. Makes it a two-point game once again. And look, as we sing the praises of Trey Jones and his ability to distribute and take care of the basketball, it's just a turnover ratio. Let's not forget, it's in his DNA. His brother, Tyus, who led this Duke team to a national championship, currently leads the NBA in assists to turnover ratio. This game is tied on the basket from Sharon Wright, Jr. 28 all, fewer than six minutes to go in the first half. This is what you get if you're Duke. A 7-6 Wake Forest team that you see on tape is not the one that shows up when you got a shot at number one. Reddish rattles home the corner three. He's not played his best as of late, averaging 13 a game on the year, but the last four, that number has dropped to just eight points a game. 
Let's take a look at the Capital One fan vote. And tonight's question, which, with college football over, it's time to pivot to hoops. So who's your number one right now? Is it Duke, Michigan, Tennessee, or Virginia? A lot of good teams to choose from there. And you know what the similarity is? Elite coaching with those four programs right there. And you know who doesn't get enough love? Rick Barnes. Show me a program that he hasn't gone to and they haven't won. Give Rick Barnes more love. The other ones already get it. My vote goes to Virginia. Best defensive numbers in the country right now on 52 points a game. You love Virginia, rightfully so. We saw what they did to Florida State. Florida State still picking themselves up off the floor after that one. Virginia, uh, an incredibly efficient team. Their defense, I'll tell you, watching Virginia, more length and athleticism than they've had in recent years, and they've had some really good years. The ACC right now with the nation leading six teams in the top 25, all of them in the top 15. To three on one, on the break, the lob too high from Johnson to saw. You know, they say you make the average human 50,000 decisions a day. For Johnson, that's probably the worst decision he'll make today. Don't go upstairs with that one. Get him with the bounce pass, pull it up on offense. Anything but doing that right there. Every possession you got to value if you're Wake Forest right now. The Chicago native turning it over the ninth for Wake in the first half. Last year was the leading scorer for the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona. But did you know that, Mike? 50,000 thoughts you have in a day. You must be reading a good book right now. I'm trying to educate myself, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, this Wake Forest team educating me in the underdog. If you didn't get it from college football, maybe you're going to get it tonight. How about all phases of Zion Williamson coming at you? And I keep using the word efficiency. It's because that's what he's been. Hasn't saw the three-point shot much, but he's got it. Operating at the mid-post against the zone in space. Finishing at the rim. Got that, too. Spinning, wheeling, dealing to his teammates. Because he's so unselfish, check that box as well. This guy has been special all season long. All the fanfare, all the expectation. Zion has delivered. After Saar's offensive rebound, Musius, the freshman from East Patch Odd, New York, makes it a one-point game. He's hit double figures five times coming off the bench. Coach Manning asking him to try and manufacture points. How can you be effective and have an impact? He did so right there. Coming out of a very strong prep school circuit in New England, Brewster Academy in New Hampshire, where he finished his high school basketball. The lead has only changed hands twice tonight. An opportunity to do it again is turned away. A foul in transition. Williamson was headed for camera shutters at the other end. Childress fouls him. And that's just a poor decision from Johnson, understanding who the opponent is, the ability to block shots, the rim protectors that Duke has. You go that far into the defense, you're not going to be able to convert. You either pull up, take a jumper, or run some offense understanding you don't have the advantage in the open floor. Especially disappointing to have a turnover like that come from a fifth year player. Yeah, and defensively you did what you wanted. A contested three and an offering for Williamson. Oh, he's feeling it from three today. He came in with four made threes on the year and he's hit two in the half. Yeah, and if you're playing those percentages, 421 coming in, you'll say, hey, if Duke's gonna beat us in a half court, with the Williamson long ball, we'll take it. But Williamson, hey, guy can do everything. But that's been also the scouting report this year against Duke is A, they haven't been a great free throw shooting team, and B, if there's a player or two you can help off of, Zion Williamson is certainly one of them. Yeah, and he's starting to take that away from you, which makes this Duke team even more formidable. Follow dunk, hold it. And a timeout for Danny Manning and Wake Forest. Start making some shots. Yeah, still up six. Makes no difference. Mike Jordan. Competition's going to be raised a little bit. Well, the three point shooting certainly has not been phenomenal this year. Jalen Horn gets to the rim and a chance for three. He's got six. And if there's going to be a guy to go off the dribble and get to the cup, I like my chances if I'm a Demon Deacons fan using Jalen Horn. How about the back cut there? Elevating it to the rim. He's got that body. Yeah, he's only a freshman, but it's 6'8. He's the guy you got to look to to generate that offense. If not Childress, it has to be 
the young horse. He's a freshman, but an important one for Danny Manning's program, coming in at number 22 in last year's ESPN 100, put together by Paul B. and Cardi and the great recruiting nation staff. Best recruit in the last 10 years. Williamson misses the dunk. Wait, Mike, you might be human. A rare point blank mistake from Zion Williamson. And it's almost as if Zion had a little bit of added gusto on the completion of this one. He wanted to make that rim pay, and when he did, that's what caused the miss. A rare miscue from one of the nation's most efficient. And it's in the paint where they get so many of their points. Duke averaging 46 points a game in the paint. It's on pace to be the best in the last eight seasons. Bolden continues to spin, holds the pivot, but the lead is six. Spin to win from Bolden. Coach K singing his praises in the pregame. In 15 minutes versus Clemson, mightily productive. 11 points, five boards, and you see that bleeding over to this evening. Childress shares in a wide open triple is empty for Horn. Oxygen. He's not a great three-point shooter either. Coming into the game, just five for 23, which is 22%. Yeah, and that's probably a place, as you look at him as a next-level guy, potentially, um, with what he's done already in his freshman season. He's got to evolve there. He's got to develop that shot to make himself truly dynamic as an offensive performer, but he's got the tools. Talked to one NBA scout on the court before the game. He said Horde was the player far and away he was most eager to see on the Wake Forest roster. Fouls on Sharon Wright, his first. There you go. You, you hear a lot about 1, 2, 5, and 22. But if you're Horde, this is one of those opportunities that you're salivating for. You want that respect. You want to show not just scouts, but everybody, including Wake Forest Nation, that you're here and you're dangerous. And they needed him as part of their recruiting class with so many defections. There's been so much roster turnover for Danny Manning's club in the last calendar year, having eight players leave the team for a variety of reasons. Some of the most impactful were guys who went for the NBA draft. Offensive board, it's blocked out of bounds, back to Duke. I'll tell you, Jack White, as the doorman checking IDs, he's turned away a lot of customers, four blocks at the rim for Jack White. Talk about a guy having an impact off the bench. A true role player with star qualities, but defensively buttering his bread this evening. Nine blocks for the team. They average about eight a game, which is best in the country. They've already surpassed that in the first 19 minutes. The largest lead today is where it stands right now at six. And Barrett takes the bump on the drive, stops the clock at 104. The second foul on right. You heard Coach Greenberg talking back in studio about the struggles from the field that Barrett, that Reddish have been experiencing, but Barrett is gonna continue to chase that next opportunity. So Wake defensively, help side's gotta be omnipresent when he starts to get into his move and go off the dribble. He's gonna go to the rim, and he's gonna take a shot at him. So Wake's gotta be in position and ready to play defensively on the help side. When you know there are a lot of drivers, and I can defer to your expertise as Notre Dame's all-time leading shot blocker. Go ahead, talk to him, Mike. When <laughs> You're very proud. When there are, when there are going to be a lot of drivers in a game, are you more attentive to say, hey, it might be coming to me a lot today? Yeah, that peripheral goes in an overdrive. You're very more keenly aware of what's going on on the other side. Now, help side, there's levels to it. If you're going to go over and be the guy who blocks that shot, who's got your back? Who's going to be the help side of the help side to get the guy you're leaving defensively? That goes back to Coach K and how he speaks on communication. You got to be speaking through all that stuff so everybody is on the same page. Wake was not in that last possession. And it's 10 points now for Barrett, the third highest scoring freshman in college basketball behind Antoine Davis of Detroit and Lamine Jane of Cal State Northridge. Barrett maybe got away with a push there underneath the basket and a couple possessions left before the break. White travel. And yeah, Jones wanted White to pull up. Jones left it for White trail on the play. And as he's going over, telling him, shoot that thing. White stepped into a good look right there from three. 
I love that he wants to get an even better one, but the best opportunity at that point was a three-point shot. Neither team has been immune from turnovers in the first half. They've combined for 19 of them. 10 for Wake, 9 for Duke. Ford puts it on the deck, goes against Williamson, fouls on the floor. And that's two on Williamson to go along with two on Reddish as well. First is good for Horde. You saw Clemson yesterday, and the next time you can see them in game action will be August 29th on the ACC Network. 15 universities, one network. Visit getaccn.com to learn more. They'll be taking on Georgia Tech August 29th exclusively on the ACC Network. Timeout by Duke with 27 seconds to go. As the shot clock is off, they get a chance to set up one more shot here. Three-point shooting has not been their forte in the first half, 29%. But what they have been able to do is distribute the ball well, and it all starts with Trey Jones. Yeah, and Trey Jones is a necessary piece. Look, everybody gives love to the other guys. If I'm taking one guy, man, to make it all work, it's Trey Jones. He's so great in the open floor, finding guys, making the right decision. As good a decision maker as there is in the country. And when he goes off that bounce with momentum downhill, he's a great finisher. But he's also looking to get other guys involved. He's giving the gifts where Mike, he should be getting the gifts. It's his birthday today. <laughs> Indeed it is. For the younger brother of uh, Tyus, part of that great freshman class that won the 2015 NCAA championship. So perhaps he can celebrate with a victory, but it's been close, perhaps closer than many anticipated in the first half. 12 assists on 16 buckets for Jones and the Blue Devils. Got to be a Zion Williamson high ball screen here and let the decision be made if Jones is to the rim or if he's leaving it back for Williamson. Williamson has earned the right to make the play here, but it'll be through the hands of Trey Jones. Here's your ball screen. There's your double read. There's your decision. And a three-pointer is good to end the half for Cam Reddish. Not the prettiest, but it got the job done. But Trey Jones did his job, took the, the ball screen, made the decision to get into the teeth of that defense. Everybody collapses on him, and somehow, some way, he gets it to Reddish for the three-point shot. Big-time play. So let's go down to Brook with Coach Danny Manning. Coach, a big point of emphasis for you was about pace. How do you evaluate your team's pace in the first half? Well, I thought we did a good job. We got into the bonus early before they did, and then we couldn't get to the free throw line. Um, I thought we put ourselves in situations to get there, but we didn't get there. So we got to stay more aggressive and get to the free throw line. And then down on the defensive end, we got to continue to stay in front of the ball, make them shoot shots. They went on a run where they got some offensive rebounds, and we got we to eliminate those. Down eight, not scoring the last nearly three minutes of this first half. What do you need to do to get your offense going? Continue to drive it and make the officials make calls. Thank you, Coach. Succinct and effective at the half. Duke 42, Wake 34. Let's send it back to Chris, Seth, Jay Will in the studio. Jordan and I and Burke, we're going to get some snacks. <laughs> As well, two of three this evening. Just a fun guy to watch. Talking with Coach Seth Greenberg in the studio the other day. He's got a Magic Johnson-esque smile that, and a pure enjoyment of the game. He's out there just having fun. The moment never too big for him. Barrett on the drive, a fist pump to cap off the bucket. Let's go down to Brooke. Had a chance to speak with associate head coach John Shire just out of halftime, and it's not often, guys, that Duke gets out-rebounded, but they were down two at the half, and he said that's our biggest concern right now is we got to keep them off the boards. Wake with 12 offensive rebounds and 10 second-chance points to go along with that. He also said we just have to settle down and play our game, something you definitely don't hear Duke say a whole lot. Stick back for Williamson. You know, Brooke, another thing that jumped out was that Duke blocked 22% of Wake's shots in the first half. What would you want to see differently offensively from the Demon Deacon? Understanding the pull-up. When you get to that point-blank range, you don't have to go all the way in as close as possible. You're wired to get to the rim, but sometimes the higher IQ play is the mid-range game, and it's something that a lot of college players haven't mastered, but you got to get that in the arsenal to prevent some of these shot blocks. Some pressure from Duke. That's when 
Devin Childress can't pass up. They're not going to get a lot of clean looks. If he's got one from distance, his ability to stroke it, he's got to go ahead and pull the trigger. He's one of the best in the country from deep. 47% coming into the game, which is 13th in the country and third in the conference behind Virginia's Kyle Guy and Virginia Tech's Ahmed Hill. Ford sizing up Barrett and uses the pull-up. Got to get back. They're coming right at you. They're not waiting. That's a practice level layup for Cam Reddick. Yeah, that's inexcusable for Wake Forest rather than celebrating the basket. Get back understanding you're going against the best transition team in the land. Not a great shot to try and answer it from right. Barrett with a dribble, that reverse layup. The last two have just been too easy. Way too easy. Giving up gaping holes. Nobody helps side to protect home, and you can't allow those. The challenge level certainly increases today. The last time out in their ACC opener, Wake Forest gave up 92 to the team with the worst offensive efficiency of the ACC, Georgia Tech. Today, it's the number two offensive efficiency team in the country. Trail in the play, you've got Barrett. It's almost like they forgot about him. Smart on the matchup, the 6'10 grad center. He can't dance with Barrett. Barrett makes him pay on his strong side, that left side. That was on Cam Reddish, his third. critical juncture in the game for this Wake Forest team. 14-point game. This is where it can get away from you. Coming out in the second stanza, fatigue sets in. Duke starts to fit, fit in, get more comfortable. They can blow the doors off this thing with as explosive as they are, especially in that open floor. That's exactly what Clemson experienced on Saturday in the ACC opener. That game was a seven-point difference at halftime, and Duke ended up winning by 19, controlling most of the second half. Beautiful acrobatics from Williamson, who's got a game-high 17. You kidding me? And then they're going to throw some full-court pressure at you here, probably try and be disruptive, catch Wake, not focus, but Wake able to advance the basketball. What a finish from Williamson right there. Mid-air, juggling it. Wide open opportunity for Horde from the top of the key. And he's called for the offensive foul. Again, here, back to the basket, spinning off the defense, loses it. I don't know, did he come down to the ground while still possessing it? Another look? Wow, got it off just in time. In time finish. Been a red hot start for the Blue Devils in the second half. First two minutes and change. They made their first five buckets. 0 for 2 there. In transition, that's an easy reaching call against Jones, his first foul. In watching Duke, when Jones goes on that drive on the baseline, you can tell his teammates have a good feel and sense for how Jones plays, understanding he's going to give that thing up. He's just going to taunt the defense, get them to commit, and then it's a dump off. So the guys playing off, they dive to the rim, looking for the catch and finish. Beautiful basket. Just couldn't convert there. You want to finish, you want to generate two. Couldn't do it, but love, love the play, love how they execute. Stars got the offensive board. Big man inside 15 feet, didn't look to score. Instead sends it to the outside, and it sits on the rim and tumbles the Demon Deacon's way for children. Good hustle from Childress. But a rare mistake there from Jones, who left his feet and didn't have anywhere to go with it. I don't think he expected Childress to get back. Childress hit the floor after finishing on the other end, but hustling back one of their junior leaders to get a deflection. He's one of the best in the country. Assist to turnover ratio. His is just under six a game. But you know who's really impressive? Cincinnati's Justin Jennifer better than 10 to 1. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Jalen Harris of Arkansas coming in second just ahead of Jones. 52-39 as Duke has expanded its advantage in the first three minutes of the second half. Number one team in the country playing its first true road game of the season. Ford fades away. Short again. Williamson's pass for Reddish. Out of bounds, back to Wake Forest. And again, an active defense, active hands, deflections, shot clock, steals. I'll tell you what makes this new defense so special. It's versatile pieces on this defense. And what I mean by versatile pieces on the Duke defense, 
guys can switch everything. If you get caught up or tied up in a screen, the defender switches. He's now guarding that man. What that does for the opposition, it takes away any advantage, Mike. There's no advantage. There's no lane. There's no gap to pursue because when you think you have it, switch, versatile defender who can guard you just as seamlessly as the guy before. That's part of the danger of having so many good athletes because with most teams on a switch, you're losing something. Yeah, you want to pursue mismatches. So that's why you have the ball screen. That's why you have screeners in general to create an advantage for your offense. Those cannot be pursued against Duke's defense, not with the caliber athlete and the versatile athlete that wears the jersey. Childress inbounds, Musius finds front iron. into the defense pins Childress and again when you throw that thing up there only one guy can get it in that space and it's Williams good vision for Barrett we saw a rare missed dunk from him in the first half just his fifth of the year he figured if I'm gonna give you a couple threes <laughs> there's, there's gotta, gotta give be you something back something's <laughs> gotta be subtracted <laughs> good head fake and an uncontested lay-in for Shondi Brown, the sophomore out of Orlando. Coach Manning talked about him being ready on the catch. Brown absolutely ready there. A good shot. Goes for the great one, gets to the win. Former top 25 player in the ESPN 100 a couple years ago. Zion Williamson, his third three-pointer of the night. It ain't gonna be fair. It ain't gonna be fair if Zion starts hitting the three-point shot. Came in with just four made threes on the year. So Duke has doubled its lead in the first five minutes of the second half. Doing it with some style points as well. Duke has theirs. When we come back, we'll check in style points with B-Dub on the Wake Forest side. The father-son pairing in the Childress household. Hope you'll be paying attention. father-son scoring duo in ACC history, so the question has got to be asked, who's the better scorer? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brandon gives that, one, gives that one to Dad, but what about the better shoe game? Who's coming through with that? Well, it depends on what kind of shoes we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about sneakers. Oh, I, I might give him that one. What about the shoes? I, when I do get a nice one, he'll steal my swag and take them, so I, I, just, I just, just I'll, get him, the last I'll, give, than mine, I'll so. give him that one. Which of you two has the highest career three-point shooting average? I don't Stumped think that's on. even close. Is that even a conversation? Well, I can tell you that Brandon has it by 0.1%. Brandon shooting a career 39.6% and Randolph at 39.5. Now, Randolph did have the benefit of a shorter three-point line, but if you ask him, he's the best shooter in the building at all times. Gotta love his confidence. Brandon's been dangerous. He came off a 28-point performance, hit a career-high seven threes against Georgia Tech, and he's 13th in the country right now at 47%. And I'll tell you, watching Duke right now and what they're starting to chase, which is Williamson down low, there's no answer for that. The opposition cannot prevent those type of plays. Duke can't get bored with that, most especially this evening, because there's a distinct advantage down low. Williamson now has the last nine for Duke. Including one where he basically calls a shot. Yeah, he's so in tune with his teammates. R.J. Bear at the top of the keys. Going to maneuver on the catch right here. And then when you freeze it, look, Zion saying, hey, give it to me. He walls that defense off, and they just go upstairs with it. So fun in talking with Coach K, how he lit up sharing the dynamic between R.J. Bear and Zion Williamson. The top two recruits coming in, the guys who are the headliners everywhere they go. He said, look, these two guys, if you see one, you're going to see the other. They're everywhere together. They're the best of friends. And as a guy who played for teams, at times there was dissension and there was egos, and ultimately that makes the team lose. 
to see coach speak so glowingly about these two guys and how it helps this team win because they look in the world we're in now where it's hey I think Zion's number one I think RJ's number one those guys don't feed into that stuff at all they love each other and it allows this team to be special well what he also added on to the back end of that too was that the families are both supportive of each yeah. player as well because when you're a player as high level as Barrett and Williamson are, you're crossing paths a lot, whether it's on the grassroots scene, whether it's with USA Basketball. The parents are spending a lot of time together. There can be rivalries there, too, but he said that's not the case between those two players, and it goes a long way toward building their team culture. Yeah, both guys come from good families, and oh, Coach K is going to bring in good guys. It's been a staple in his program, good young men. He's not just gonna bring in good players. He's gonna bring in good men from good families. And these guys, there's no ego. So then when you see no ego with those two, then other guys who could have an ego like a Cam Reddish or a Trey Jones, they don't have it either. So you're devoid of egos and a team can win. 59-43, the lead for number one Duke. 12 and 1 on the year. Their only loss against Gonzaga. Wake Forest, 7 and 6, dropping their ACC opener against Georgia Tech on Saturday at McCamish Pavilion. Offensive board, Delorier out on the way up. Delorier doing his job, bringing his hard hat, working on the second chance opportunities. And Mike, I'll tell you where this Duke team is right now, number one in the nation. A very commanding lead right now but where they can be better look they're very good defensively it's a beautiful thing to watch in the open floor offensively efficient one of the nation's most but when they start hitting the three-point shot something that's not part of the arsenal consistently a team that shoots around 32 percent from distance when they start making shots when rj starts getting more consistent there cam reddish rediscovers his Trey even starts to knock those down this team is going to be even tougher of an out the difficulty comes, you know, one of the matchups that's highly anticipated on the league schedule is when they take on Virginia, where the game really slows down. Virginia allows the fewest points in the game per, or per game in the country. And then you have to maximize all those possessions, which they have. Here's Jones on the run. Shifting hands and still score. Yeah, it's going to be about how can do generate offense consistently in a half court. Because that's what Virginia will task you with. If Virginia plays a suffocating style, you talk about positionless pieces on your defense, and Virginia possesses that as well. So they push you out. Duke will be uncomfortable and will be disrupted in that game. I'll be really locked in to see how they fare against a team like Virginia. Count the basket, according to the official Brian O'Connell, who said it was goaltending on Williamson. Wake Forest has to get back to spacing. Got to get back to spacing out of defense. Look, with good spacing here, allows for a driving lane. Look like that thing was still going up. I thought just from getting the first look at it that after he tipped it, it then hit the backboard. I could be wrong. Which makes me a little lax on being critical of the officials because we've got replay access here and still can't <laughs> determine what's the right call there. But they're going to call the goal tip. We're going to go the other way. Williamson, the game's leading scorer. Count that one. He's got 26. He's put on a show. He had 25 points against Clemson. Not necessarily remarkable in and of itself. But it was the fact that he did it in such a short time tied the fewest minutes played in a 25.10 rebound game by any major conference player in the last 20 years doing it in 22 minutes and that defense again king the offense challenging everything and the shot block rate is just through the roof right now duke is elite defensively this is as good a team defensively as you're going to see out there that's mightily impressive with so many young guys so many new pieces that have bought into winning on that side Foul is the call under the basket against Saar. 63-45, Duke starting to pull away from Wake Forest. Number one, Duke has always. Johnny's off to their best start since 85-86. And we've got Jay Billis, our own in the house, because his son Anthony 
is on the team talking to Anthony before the game. He scored his first two career points, his only points against Cornell a couple games ago for Wake Forest. And he has, well, the scaries that everybody's got when you get toward the end of your college career. What's next? He wants to stay in basketball. He said, yeah, I want to be in the NBA. And he quickly said, you know, not playing. <laughs> Wanted to make that distinction. Work, working in some capacity at the next level. Well, he's a billist. He's bound to be successful. Look here, I thought Jay was here to see how his game at Duke matched up with Zion's. <laughs> then I realized his son was here. That makes complete sense. Jay's one of the best in the business. It was an eight-point lead at halftime for Duke. They had a seven-point lead last game against Clemson, ended up winning that game by almost 20 points. And they've extended their lead mightily here in the second half against the seven and six squad, picked second to last in the 15-team ACC. Childress just has to fire as the shot clock expires, and the long board is down to Deloria. And Wake not blessed with enough shooters. And you talk about that three-point shot, how it can lessen the gap of talent between a team like Duke and Wake. But they can't get that going. A three for R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett making the defense look silly. Kill him with the crossover slurp. Brain freeze. And Jordan, three-point shooters for Wake Forest. You've got Brandon Childress, and then it's kind of a shoulder stroke as to who the next best guy is. Take a look at R.J. Barrett. This is why I like him as the number one pick in the draft. His ability to produce off the bounce with his size and his ability at 6'7 and a lefty. Who do you see when you see that? It's a lefty in the league. It's a reigning MVP in the National Basketball Association. I see James Harden on a play like that. I'm not saying they're the exact same player, but a lefty who can straight fill it up with those type of ball skills, it's R.J. Barrett. You think he can grow the beard? I think he's better served without it. <laughs> I couldn't grow the beard as a freshman in college, and many years later, I still can't grow that kind of beard. Barrett up the drop off. And Deloria finishes with two. And again, it's Barrett making plays off the bounce. When you've got his ability to shoot it, the defense comes running at you. It allows the blow by, and then there's another layer of defense that allows the dump off. Great vision. Transition three on two. A rare missed opportunity for Duke. Same numbers back the other way. Brown. So they had transition offense and they didn't get a good shot out of it. Fouls on Jack White for Duke, his first. That dunk, last time Duke had a clean offensive possession down the other end of the floor. Delore has now made three shots today. That's 19 consecutive shots, just one shy of the ACC record. The last time he missed a shot was going all the way back to December 1st in that blowout win against Stetson. So you know what the big fella has to do now? He's got to go to his teammates and say, I've missed a shot in 19 attempts. Let me take more. And then you want to become a three-point shooter. Then you want to start doing things that you're not accustomed to doing. But no, credit to Delorier for staying within his game. And he's been inserted into the starting lineup for that very reason and the impact he's having. An unforgotten piece, but plays a big-time role as a rim protector, a dump-off and finish guy, a high-energy rebounder who's incredibly active in his time on the floor. Starter ever since the game against Yale back on December 8th. And Brown's got the second. Seven now for Shondi Brown. 69 points for Duke. Zion Williamson contributing 26 of those, just two shy of his career high. Already his seventh double-double of the season in 14 games, 26 and 10. Was 28 came in the opener against Kentucky. He is so hard to keep out of the paint. It's the reason why you have pack line defenses at times to keep guys like that from being able to get there and finish. R.J. Barrett, oof, that is just tough stuff. It's 6'7", the length. He's so good putting it on the floor, so comfortable, and at times very comfortable with an unusual delivery. That makes it incredibly hard to guard. 
Duke's had so much easier access to the rim in the second half. What's been the difference with their ease of getting there from the first to the second? Ease in terms of easier shots at the basket. Yeah, well, I think this team's no longer settling for threes. I think they're seeing that it's been futile for the most part here recently. They see a distinct advantage down low. And they're being attention to detail and pursuing the advantage and not getting bored with it like some teams would. Sports Center comes your way tonight after North Carolina and NC State here on ESPN with Bucci and Anderson. Our NBA draft expert Mike Schmitz gives you a breakdown of Zion's NBA future, plus the NFL's coaching carousel, big day for Cliff Kingsbury, and how the Colts D gets ready for Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs get ready for luck. Sports Center tonight after college hoops and also on the ESPN app. What an interesting world we live in where you can be a head coach at Texas Tech and have an okay tenure and then all of a sudden get a job in the NFL. Yep. And there's just nobody back for Wake. Yeah, Wake is completely run out of gas. You'll get a timeout, a chance to refuel as Duke is cruising to the finish line. The highest of praise for Zion Williamson, Kevin Durant calls him a once-in-a-generation athlete. John Wall, top two, three most athletic players he's seen. Stephon Marbury maybe takes it a little bit over the top, though. Hey, that's what he does. <laughs> True to form, right? Real recognizes real with these guys. I mean, they, they're paying attention. They're watching. And how couldn't you? Zion Williamson is not taking college basketball by storm. He's taking the game of basketball by storm. And I'm going to go back to Coach K and credit him for this. Uh, allowing this team to be who they are, not overmanaging them, and letting personalities be exactly that. And these are very impressive personalities. Look. It could very well be a team filled with so many egos that they're losing by 10 to Wake Forest because everybody wants to go for 50. But it's plays like that that turn into a charge, but it's selfless basketball. It's wanting each other to be great, and that allows this team to be uniquely special. Zion Williamson isn't out there playing for himself, nor is R.J. Barrett, nor is Cam Reddish or Trey Jones. These guys want to be one of the all-time special Duke teams, and they could be well on their way. There's a good illustration of just how good this young team is on the fast break. You have two guys going up for the ball at the rim. <laughs> and both fully capable of finishing. Freshman tonight, 61 of the 73 points for Duke. Oof. Musius, the freshman for Wake, connects on a much needed triple from the corner. Musius is a bright young star. One of his better games took place at Richmond, 17.7 boards there, but he's a guy that's come off the bench, provided a spark for this team. And I think the three-point shot's a place he can grow, but also just being ready on the catch at all times. He should be the third scorer for this team. He can be that type of talent for these guys as he grows in his collegiate career, but there's some young talent on Wake, and this team's gonna sneak up on some teams. Well, after tonight, they'll still be in search of their first ACC win, threatening to drop to 0-2. And Chris, you get the chance to see one of the best freshmen in the country, even though people are clamoring for more playing time for Nasir Little. There's still a learning curve to be figured out, but he's been a great contributor for this team. Coach Williams said he's the most explosive athlete he's ever seen on the floor. Think about the guys of Roy Williams seen in his tenure. High praise for him. Nasir needs to grow as a defender. Needs to get a better feel for how to get it offensively within the flow. But he'll be there. He's getting his minutes. He'll be fine. And he'll only get more time and opportunity. It's a great time for basketball in the triangle with NC State and Duke and Carolina. And it's the first time that the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack are playing both as ranked teams against one another since 2006. It's going to be a fun game. Play a lot of bodies both teams give a lot of guys opportunities which means at all times the foot is on the gas it's gonna be up and down both teams operate well in the transition both teams crash the backboard and try and generate second chance opportunity it's a real platform for North Carolina State to say they've arrived going against a, a blue blood like Carolina I think that's happened already I think Kevin Keats has had enough top 25 wins, even very early in his tenure, that they've arrived, not to the level, historically speaking, of their two biggest rivals, but they certainly have. 
under his watch. How about this? Another chance for a big statement. That's right. A big NC statement. There you go, America. Compromise. You see that? <laughs> a debate that ends in a handshake. It can be done. It's possible. Williamson, off balance and all, ties his career high from the opener against Kentucky with 28. Now, if we argue about the color of my blazer, I don't think we'll come to agreement that this is a wise play. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Horde jams it in, 77-53. Zion again, playing downhill, loses his footing. I think he's just challenging himself at this point, trying to add a degree of difficulty. But with the power coming down the lane, you just don't see stuff like that. Now, that path was completely clear, but you don't see a lot of defenders trying to take a charge. There is a sense of fear defending that young man as he gets that full head of steam. Is it because they don't want to be x-rayed for broken bones <laughs> after the game? Probably that, but also I'll just say, it, it's a flash, it's a blur. He's so powerful with the quick first step. He can beat that help side before it gets situated and sets up for a charge. He's part of the 250th meeting between Wake Forest and Duke and NC State, North Carolina, coming up after this, 9 o'clock Eastern from Raleigh will be the 235th time those two teams have played each other. We get a lot of history between the squads today. Now on Olivier Saar, the fourth, on the French big man for Wake Forest. They changed it. It's on Shondi Brown instead. Golden with the pump fake. And now Saar picks up the foul. Bolton has been a man on the backboard. Just working. Unselfish selfish is a theme for this team that's loaded with stars. And Bolden, a big-time star in his own right that's battled injury, but has come back, accepted a role, and understanding that role can play huge dividends for this team. And that's battling on that backboard. That's being one of those defenders between him and Delorier coming back and forth, keeping the game at a high level in the interior, anchoring that defense. He's provided that, and he's been good down the stretch lately for this Duke team. Shooting 56% from the floor. It's Williamson with a career-high tying 28. Back in for Barrett with six minutes to go. This game going the way of Duke Wake games as of late, where Duke has won the last eight games by an average of 14 points. Last win in this series for Wake Forest came against then number four Duke back at the end of the regular season in 2014. An 82-72 win here at Winston-Salem. Tyler Cavanaugh had 20 for the Deeks. And then Blue Devil Jabari Parker had 19 for Duke. Wake coming into this one saw some of the success Clemson had with spacing Duke out and being able to score. That was in the first half. Then eventually Duke was able to wear them down. You see the same here with Wake. Wake wanted to get some backdoor cuts to challenge that aggressive Duke defense that gets in passing lanes and make them pay. They never really had that. He had to utilize a three-point shot. Wake couldn't get that going. And of course, like all Manning teams, they want to do that, play through the post. And that's been the outcome, unfortunately, for Demon Deacon fans. Off the entry pass, it looked like a first-time ice skater in the post, and they give it away. Unfortunately, that was Horde who turned it over, but very intrigued by this young man and how he grows in conference play in this ACC. A 40th ranked prospect at the next level. He has a chance to, to move on up the boards as he sees some marquee matchups because let me tell you, game in and game out, the ACC is going to be tough for any team, but most especially Wake, so he's going to have to prove that he belongs, and he will. New career high for Williamson with 30. They're going to need Horde to be an interior presence as well. Olivier Saar added about 30 pounds to his frame in the offseason, going from about 210 to somewhere in the neighborhood of 240. And Horde, as a freshman, 6'8", 215. I'll tell you where I like Duke a lot, too, is the high-low game. With Williamson playing low, at times even playing high, but most especially down low. That is hard to stop when you've got a guy with size at the mid post passing over the defense. Williamson gathering, collecting, and finishing. I don't know how you stop that. 
An absolute clobbering of Childress as he pulled up for the elbow wide jumper. Jones gets called for the foul. Childress held to just 11 so far tonight, averaging 17 and coming off a 28 point performance on Saturday against Georgia Tech. Hey, bro. So, guys, you, you were talking about Brandon Childress and how his scoring and his improvement has just really resounded year after year. He's also one of the, the Ironmen of this league. He's playing 36.8 minutes a game. That's second most in the ACC. And I asked him about his fitness routine, knowing he'd have to come into this season playing more minutes. And he said he cut out meat over the summer, and he's also been focusing on not only his rest, but how he chooses to spend his social time. That's maybe one of the first times I've ever heard a college kid talk about Hey, I could either go out, I could, you know, be on Instagram, or I could get some rest, and instead I'm going to choose rest. Well, Brooke, we got an interesting blast from the past when we were sitting courtside during Wake Shoot-Around today. As Steve Kirkland, the sports information director for the Demon Deacons, pulled up the box score of the last game you played here with Coastal Carolina. Of course, if you don't know, Brooke, former Big South Player of the Year. And that game, what did you play, 38 minutes? I had to play quite a bit. We had, we had three starters out my senior year, so my coach gave me the green light, which I took oh, yeah. full advantage of with 19 shots. <laughs> she beat me to the punch because she knew I was going to get her on that. I saw that stat sheet. You yep. could get me on the six turnovers, too. I mean, <laughs> oh, Don't be too yeah. hard on yourself. Hey. I was just going to say, for as unselfish as you are in life, 19 shots, maybe your basketball life entirely different. <laughs> from. you got to give me the green light. I'm going to take it. <laughs> you had the green jersey and the green light. Well, thanks for sharing the broadcast with us this evening, Gunner. <laughs> okay, I got you, Jordan. All right, she I got did, one for you. She did, wait till we get back to Chicago, though. She did have a teammate who went one of 11 from three, so. Oh, that's th dirty, Mike. There was some, How are you going to call her out? She could, Brooke felt good about her stat line. <laughs> we got 4.05 to go. My cousin Jordan Cornette, Brooke Weisbrod with you here in the final minutes from Winston-Salem as Duke led by eight at the half. And there's a foul on White as they've made it a large advantage in the second. 81 56, four minutes to go. Duke eyeing 13 and 1. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Boost Mobile. Boost makes it easy to switch, switching makes it easy to save. ACC game slate tomorrow night. That'll be against Miami. Been a really nice start to the year for them. They lost against Villanova early, and then they have their only other loss of the season that came against Virginia, that 13-point defeat at JPJ back on Saturday. Yeah, Florida State's looking to get back to their winning ways after that tough matchup versus Virginia. It's an older team. It's a tough-minded team. Hard-nosed bunch. They can really shoot it. And they've got guys on the perimeter that are they're long down low, big athletes. I'm still very intrigued by this Florida State team. I think a lot of people sold them off after seeing that Virginia game, but that's what Virginia does, and that's what Virginia does at home. But don't discount this Florida State team. Terrence Mann, off to a great start this year. One of my favorite names to say in the ACC, Fiondu Cabangeli, also averaging about 10 points a game for the Seminoles. So Duke with a win tonight goes to 13 and one. They'll be two and zero in ACC play with wins over Clemson over the weekend and Wake here tonight. And the Demon Deacons will drop to seven and seven, zero oh and two, having fallen to Georgia Tech and Duke. Doesn't matter what lineup you give Trey Jones, he's still going to put those guys in pristine scoring position. A nice little leave off there for both. Does it alter the way you play, especially as a guy who had to get fed the ball under the basket? Although you like to take your share of threes as well. Yeah, that's why but I'm no longer playing. <laughs> I fell in love with that three-point shot. <laughs> but when you've got a point guard like that, that you have to be a little bit more aware because he might get you the ball in a situation where you don't even think it's coming? Yeah, well, look, the transition is keyed by him. So what these players surrounding him are conditioned to always be aware of is, hey, on a miss, run and run with your eyes up and get to a position on the floor where you're comfortable converting because guess what that ball is going to find its way to you you just need to put forth the effort of running and that great guard with elite vision will find you that's huge 
So Duke number one in the country right now, one of six ACC teams in the top 25, all of them clustered within the top 15. We've got more top 25 action as well coming your way next as North Carolina travels to PNC Arena. Sold out. Tip off right after this one as they meet as top 25 teams for the first time since 2006. It's been interesting to watch the styles and the way those teams have developed this year because Roy, of course, in January is not going to be pleased with his team. Still thinks they have a way to go, and they do because they're a very talented group against an NC State squad that has very much found its identity. Starts with pressure defense. Yeah, absolutely, and you talk about personnel. This year, Little is one of the headliners, albeit he coming off the bench, but Cody White, a blur with the basketball. You talk about a guy that's really gotten acclimated as a freshman. We talk about these Duke freshmen. Let's not forget that young man has really provided a punch and made this Carolina team that much more dynamic. Going against those guards and the pressure of North Carolina State, will the freshmen succumb to it? That's a storyline we're following throughout the entire evening. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch how much that pressure pays off for the Wolfpack because they love to do that. But conversely, North Carolina likes to get out and run. And if there are opportunities to do that and get past the pressure, those could be easy baskets for the Tar Heels. Yeah, it's going to feel like a track meet. That's why it's going to be so much fun to watch because it's aggression versus aggression. Iron sharpens iron. Who gets the best of whom there? You got to watch to find out. No better tease, right, Mike? State Carolina comes your way next from Raleigh here on ESPN. So we've got Duke number one in the country. Behind them, Virginia number four. Virginia Tech is very intriguing right now. Number nine in the country, second highest they've ever been in the AP poll. You've got to go back to when they were eighth in January of 96, which seems like a long time ago. First of their five seasons in the Atlantic 10, but that's still, question mark, your pick to win the league? Why, why do you say it like that? Yeah, that's my pick. And look, I'm watching. Because you watch the number one team in the country watching, tonight. And, and Duke could share it with them. This is no takeaway from Duke. Duke is phenomenal. We've had a chance to see them in person a few times. It's a great team. I didn't say Virginia Tech wins it outright, so I could easily still give some love to this Duke team. But what? That is such a step backwards by you. I'm not even going to. I'm totally <laughs> messing with you when I say that. Virginia Tech is my team, and I'm going to tell you why, Mike. This is a Virginia Tech team who's old. They've got continuity. They've got a bunch of different weapons. Everybody on the catch, and I mean everybody, can make a play for Virginia Tech. They get up in you and go. They dictate the tempo of the game. And when I say everybody can do something with the ball, so many shooters and a bench that's productive as well. They play at times five out. And if not five out, it's four out, one in. And that one in, Blackshear, can step out too at 6'10". So that's my pick. I'm standing by it. I really like this Virginia Tech team. Their second best three point shooting team in the country, the Hokies, trailing only Dr. Brett Reed's Lehigh Mountain Hawks. Share that one at the water cooler tomorrow. Lehigh's making a broadcast. <laughs> 12 points for Marquise Bolden. Has his team rolling. If you think this is the same team that got beat by Kansas in the Champions Classic, you're absolutely. As Duke topples Wake Forest, the Blue Devils now 13 and one, and the Demon Deacons fall to seven and seven. And I'll tell you what, if you came, maybe not to cheer on the Demon Deacons, but to watch Zion Williamson, he delivered the nation's best player to this point, and it's not even up for debate. He does everything for this team. Efficient down low, defensively, Duke brought it and keyed their offense. So many weapons, they simply overwhelmed Wake Forest this evening. Coming up next, a top 15 matchup. Number 12, North Carolina at sold out PNC Arena against number 15, NC State. We thank you for being with us tonight on behalf of our entire crew. Brooke Weisbrod on the sidelines, my partner Jordan Cornette, Mike Cousins saying so long. Let's get you to Raleigh, Allison Williams, LaFonzo Ellis, and the man on the mic, here's Dan Schoenberg.